Wizards, the third and seemingly final of the Tales of Arcadia series, is a pretty good, yet profoundly flawed show. It's a one-season show where its predecessor, Three Blow, was a two-season show, and I talked about that show in a previous video. If you're watching this in the playlist, you just watched that one. And in that video, I made it very, very clear that I think that show should have been a three-season show. It got two seasons, which is, you know, fine, right? It's almost three seasons. This should have been a three-season show, too. Man, I, um... I'm not going to talk about this one for too long. Because if I do, I'm just going to end up ranting. Um, I have so many problems with the pacing of this show. I still think you should watch it. I guess I want to start the review off by saying definitively, if you like the other two shows, you should still watch this one. It's not a bad show. It's just, it could have been so much better than what it is, right? This show follows Merlin's never-before-talked-about apprentice, um, Hizzard Dukes, I think was his full name. Dukes or Dukesy is what people usually call him. He is the protagonist of this one, technically. Like, Jim is in this in this show, right? Like, he is a character in this show, but he's basically reduced to a damsel in distress. In this one, he's slowly being killed by an onyx crystal that's making its way towards his heart through the amulet. So while he's there, while the hero of the overall franchise is there, the troll hunter is there, he doesn't really do much in this series, unfortunately. I guess the best way to put it, I guess the best way to sum up my issues with the pacing in this one, is that I have never seen a show more afraid to develop a status quo than this one. Because even when it feels like the show is establishing a status quo, so many things are happening constantly to shake it up that it, it, it never feels like that's the case. Like Dukesy, for example, he has this sort of distant fatherly relationship kind of thing going on with Merlin. Even after all of these centuries that he's been Merlin's apprentice, Merlin doesn't really trust him and still insists that he take things slow and learn things more carefully. But Dukesy is a rebellious teenager. He even dresses kind of goth and plays music. And so he has to rush in and refuses to listen to what other people say. He doesn't take criticism very well. He's very outwardly sure of himself, though you can tell he's not actually that sure of himself. He's trying to prove something not just to the people around him, but to himself as well. And he's not like a bad guy or, he's, or an idiot, and he's not weak, but he has a lot of potential that he's not making good use of. Kind of like this show, frankly. And the show starts out with his familiar, a... It's not really a cat. I guess he's technically a dragon, kind of, but he can shapeshift into basically any animal. Though he, he mostly keeps the same color scheme. What is his name? Archie, I think. He runs off at Merlin's behest. Well, at Duxie's behest, at Merlin's behest. To gather the heroes of Arcadia because something terrible has happened. That being, Jim's been injured, and he only finds, because this is this is that stinger at the end of Three Below, right? He finds Steve and Toby and Arg. Was there anybody else there with him at that, at that point in time? I don't think so. Doesn't really matter. And they go together with Merlin back to Camelot Castle, which is a flying airship now. And I'm thinking, when I see this, I'm thinking, wow, what a cool setting for this show. We spend less than an episode here. I was so mad, you guys. You have no idea. Because while this whole thing is happening with Jim and the thing that hurt him, a strange a knight clad in, like, dark greenish armor is out and about, New villains are introduced immediately, out of nowhere. Characters that we have never heard of before. They are called the Arcane Order. They're these three primordial demigods. One that's lava-themed, one that's ice-themed, and one that's nature-themed. Guess which one of them turns into a good guy? And they attack Camelot Castle, necessitating that our characters evacuate into the past. And so some of the characters evacuate into the past, but not even all of them. So... 
the interesting ensemble that we thought we were going to get seeing the beginning of this first episode, we don't even get. Which bummed me out again. I feel like... I feel like this stuff with the castle was supposed to be the first arc of the show. It feels like they had enough assets and characters and plot potential for the stuff with the knight and, and the castle to be the first arc of this show leading up to, I don't know, maybe a confrontation with the knight that gets superseded by this arcane order and, and that's how they were going to be introduced as kind of a surprise villain at the end of the first arc leading into the second arc, which sent our characters back to the past. Because, like, like they make use of the castle, I guess, again later for other stuff. But it's such a big, complicated asset and such an interesting setting to just ignore in favor of instead sending some of our characters back in time to regular fantasy past Camelot. Which is still cool, mind you. But, like, it's so much less cool than flying airship Camelot Castle. And then once they get to the past, initially, they insist that they can't change things. They have to do everything they can not to change things. And then they immediately start interacting with people. Like, even if you don't tell them you're from the future, just just interacting with people in the past that you wouldn't have interacted with before is going to change things. Like, Dukesy's able to get around it mostly, because he can just pre pretend to be his past self. He was already Merlin's apprentice back then, too. But, like, <laughs> Claire interacts directly with Morgana. It, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it, it telegraphs immediately that unless... The writers working on this franchise plan to completely upend the entire continuity of the entire franchise, something that I'm sure they would never do. This is going to be a closed loop, meaning that <laughs> they always did these things, that these characters, their lives always looped back and intersected with these past events. A closed time loop. Meaning that everything they do here, every interaction that they have with any other people, any mistakes that they make, anything that they do right or well, all already happened. That basically nothing they do matters, because regardless of what they do, everything is just going to end up where it was already anyway. Which steals all of the tension from the show, and there's a twist later, because... There are some cool things here, and I'm going to talk about those in a minute. And one of them is we do get to see the forging of the Troll Hunter amulet, which was pretty neat. But there's a reveal that happens later that the show frames as a twist regarding who gets chosen by the amulet the very first time and how it doesn't seem to line up with the history that we had seen back in Troll Hunters. But because they already telegraphed that this is a closed loop, we know that somehow everything has to turn out the way it did originally anyway, so this twist has to happen. It doesn't work as a twist because the show already told us that it's not actually as unexpected as it seemed. It's absolutely bonkers. This show is only 10 episodes long. It never stops. There are so many things going on in here. Gunmar's army is attacking and building up for the major battle at, what was it called? Killahead Bridge, I think is what it was called. I can't remember. The names for things in this franchise are really weird. But but that's gearing up to happen. That happens in this show. We're building up to that, that really important thing from the lore of this franchise. But we also have Claire interacting with and learning from the person who eventually turns evil and possesses her, while we also have the arc of that person turning evil, and then we have the stuff with trying not to let Jim die and the stuff with the first troll hunter and the stuff with having to interact with troll hunters characters that we already know who don't know our heroes yet then there's stuff with King Arthur hating magic because it's 
causing so many problems in his kingdom. And so they have to try to redeem him and get him and his people to work with the good trolls. And then there's also all the stuff with Duxy and Merlin and the two of them actually bonding because this is future Duxy and he knows more about Merlin than his past self would have. He's able to interact with him in not really different ways because again, he would have had to have done all this the first time through too, right? But in ways which are at least different to him, new to him and he's able to grow as a person and he undergoes a bit of an arc. And Merlin even seems to, too, he seems to come to appreciate Duxy more in the past, but you know that that doesn't really matter because again, all of this stuff had to have happened the first time through, too. So the Merlin that we got to know in season three of Troll Hunters, who was still back in the future, already experienced these things and underwent all of these changes and he's still kind of a douchebag. Like, I definitely like him better here than I did in Troll Hunters. But he's still kind of an asshole, right? And like, I even feel like Duxy had multiple character arcs this season. First, he had to learn to take things slower, to listen to the people around him, and grow off of them. Then he also, at the same time as that kind of, had to learn to apply his own personality to those things that he learns from other people and make them his own. But then he also had this bond that he formed very quickly with the nature-themed member of that arcane order who switches sides. It felt like three character arcs worth of stuff, which is where I'm getting that I think this was originally supposed to be a three-season show. Because just like I, I think Three Below was supposed to be a three-season show that got compressed down to two seasons, this definitely feels like it was supposed to be at least a two-season, probably a three-season show. I think what happened is that the crew working on these shows were told that they were only getting three more seasons total, and it was at some point during the course of production for Three Below, so they made Three Below into a two-season show and this show into a one-season show. I can't find any confirmation of that, but the, the absolute batshit pacing of this show... I can't think of any other reason for it. Because Troll Hunters was a little fast paced sometimes. And the third season of Three Below was a little fast paced sometimes. But they weren't this poorly paced. This is one of the worst paced shows I've ever watched. There, are, There's always like six things happening at once, plot lines overlapping each other. Like, I didn't even mention Steve trains with Lancelot to become a knight in this one, too. Which continues his arc of becoming a better person, right? Because Lancelot's basically the kind of jock that he is slash was. And so there's never time to just slow down and let the characters breathe and interact with each other like real people. There's always something happening. And I'm not going to go into this too much because I just did a video recently about this. I think I called it in defense of filler or something like that. I'll put a link to it up in the thing where I talk about how this is a major issue with a lot of shows these days. And it's a major issue with this one too. But there is still some really cool stuff here. The aesthetic in this is fantastic. I love the way that Camelot looked in this. And not just super awesome flying airship Camelot, but just Camelot in general. The magic looks super cool. The designs on the Arcane Order members is fantastic, are fantastic, because there's three of them. I particularly really love the designs of the lava-themed one, whose name I can't remember, it started with a B, and the nature-themed one, Nari, the one who switches sides. They both look fantastic. Balrock, I think, maybe, was the lava-themed one. Um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use they, because they had kind of a male-female voice thing going on. Um, looked extremely creepy. <laughs> I've already watched the Troll Hunters movie, which is set after this, and I understand why they were basically the final boss in that. They're definitely the most intimidating of the three, but Nari's design is just gorgeous. Like, this is just a very appealing-looking character. And it is, of course, just generally beautifully animated. This world looks amazing. And while I, while I don't know that we needed to see all of the stuff with, with like the battle with Gunmar, the initial battle with Gunmar and stuff, 
it was still cool to see it. It was still cool to see all of that stuff reach the point that we knew it did from what we had heard about past lore back in Troll Hunters. It was still cool to actually see the battle happen and to actually see Morgana turn into the villain that she became. And it was definitely really, really cool to see the forging of the amulet. In fact, I think thematically the forging of the amulet worked better than anything else in this entire season because it tied into Duxie's story. We see that Duxie and Merlin forge it together and it's a major culmination of their whole bonding arc. And it also leads to us meeting the very first troll hunter and getting to see her fight. And it reassures us that they'll be able to recreate the amulet after Jim's amulet is destroyed later in the series. Which does thankfully result in him turning back into a human, undoing the dumbest thing about the original series, but it leaves him powerless. Just in time for the movie. Which frankly is very, very interesting. And it's not like the character stuff here is awful. The animation on the characters is still solid to great. The voice acting is excellent. What character stuff they managed to fit in here is good. Like again, this isn't a bad show. It's just not a great show either. I think the original Troll Hunters, despite a few hiccups here and there, was a really great show. This one's just okay to good, and that bums me out. Like, I talk about Star Trek sometimes on this channel. Star Trek Voyager was the first Star Trek show that I remember watching as a kid from the very start. And I still love that show. I still think it's a good show that the things that it actually does, it does pretty well. But it had so much potential to do more, and this show feels the same way to me. It feels like it had so much potential, and it just wastes so much of it. And I, I can't imagine that this was planned. I can't imagine that they planned originally to cram this much stuff into just 10 episodes. I have to figure this was meddling by Netflix. And that pisses me off more than anything else. If that's the case, it pisses me off more than anything else, because this show could have been magnificent. It looks so good. All the time. Like, I haven't even mentioned Excalibur. Excalibur is in this show. And it looks magnificent. It gets stuck in a stone at the end. Which bums me out, because Excalibur was not the sword in the stone. I don't understand. Like, they even the Lady of the Lake was even in this. And can we just talk about how cool the Lady of the Lake in this was? I actually think that might be my favorite thing about the whole season, was the design they went with for the Lady of the Lake. If you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. Like, the Lady of the Lake was even in this show. <laughs> and they still do the whole Excalibur is the Sword and the Stone thing. It wasn't. That was Caliburn. And after he lost Caliburn, the Lady of the Lake gave him Excalibur to replace it. Come on, seriously. But at the very least, the fact that Excalibur is in the show and it needs to be pulled from the stone before it can be used again does imply that by the end of the movie... Somebody is going to be the rightful king of England, which is pretty neat. Like, there's a lot to love here, and that's why I'm being kind of vague. I don't want to spoil this show too much. Because, again, if you're someone who's already invested in this franchise, you need to watch it. But, man, it, it... I wanted to like this even more than I did. And it bums me out that I don't. I just rewatched it over the last couple of days. And I... I liked it better the second time through than I did the first. But I still, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about how, man, if they had just slowed down, if they had just had the time to slow down here for a few episodes and just let the characters breathe, this would have been so much better. If you've seen the show, you, I, I, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, you should still watch it. Especially if you're going to watch the movie. Because, like... The three below, like, it, it, the movie's a crossover between everything, right? The three below characters are in the movie, but man, I've, I've, I've already watched the movie, right? I already said that before. 
they kind of recap everything, all the lore important stuff at the beginning of the movie, and the three below stuff is just like hardly mentioned at all. They have they have so little to do with the overall lore arc of this franchise, it's laughable. <sighs> Why couldn't they have only gotten one season and this show had gotten two? And that would have just made their show terrible. It just I don't know. Do with this review what you will. It's been very disorganized, and I apologize for that. But, um, yeah. Um, good show. Could have been better. Really, really too fast-paced. There you go. That's my that's my con conclusion paragraph. And, um... This is where... I hoped to be able to say... Man, I just... I really hope the movie... Manages to bring this back around to being really great. But um, spoilers for my review of the movie coming in a couple of days. It was it was so close. It was so close to ending this franchise on a super high note. It was so close. But I can't think. I can't think of any movie off the top of my head. That with with an ending that I hate more than I hate the ending of this movie. But we'll talk about that when we talk about it. Don't spam the comment section about it. I I, I swear I'll I'll delete your comments. <laughs> wait wait for the review. <laughs> I, I I just couldn't help but say something because because we're on the topic, right? As per usual, I'd like to know what did you guys think of Wizards Tales of Arcadia? If you have seen it, let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video, share it with anyone else you think would enjoy my content, subscribe. If you haven't, you can also check out all of the links to my various social medias as well as to the several ways you can help out the channel. Those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.